Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. A little drizzly out this morning, but I, as long as I got my coffee, that's that's really all that matters. Um, we, can, we can use the rain around here. It's not bad, but getting a little dry, so it's it's good to start getting that in this, this time of the year. They're calling for over the next few days, not lots, but, you know, a couple of inches of rain, which would be pretty good for us. So we'll, we'll see if we get it, but it did drizzly, sprinkly kind of rain all night long. <sighs> Just have a question. Can you survive the coming collapse? Maybe the better question is, is will you survive the coming collapse? Because we know it's survivable. I mean humans have gone through horrible things throughout their existence and, and at least some have survived because we're here today but will you survive the coming collapse and that's that's the big question because i think it's probably going to be a lot worse than we expect you know that well, what's the old saying the bigger they are the harder they fall and i think that's what we're going to see happen here in the united states uh, and and across the west um, when we start to look at everything going on, it, it, it becomes more and more apparent that we are in a state of collapse. It is, it's a progressive thing. It may seem slow at times. It may seem rapid at times. But either way, we are watching nearly everything uh, that, that makes us a society, that gives us structure and, uh, as, a, as, a, as a civilization. We're watching it fall apart. Everything from family structure to morality to common sense, uh, the innocence of children, um, just common decency, uh, all the way up to you know financial stuff, uh, a war stance. Uh, that's we're seeming to get into wars everywhere now, or at least trying to. Um, you know, just our our our, um, our prominence in, in this world as a nation everything we're watching it just fall apart uh, and of course i'm just scratching the surface because america's been what it's been for at least the last century or so and really since its existence which is you know a fairly strong stable nation that that most of the rest of the world kind of look up to or um, has respect for or, or or whatever because of that and because of the luxurious lifestyle that we've all lived, and before you say anything, I know that some of you grew up poor, some of you are con continually poor right now. Trust me, everyone watching and listening to this video right now has grown up in a luxurious lifestyle compared to human standards. Uh, the fact that you're watching this online, whether it's your little phone or your computer, that right there is luxurious compared to most of the rest of the world and most of the, you know, anything in humanity's history. In fact, uh, I would argue that the poorest of you has modern conveniences and luxurious items that kings and queens of past did not have. And not just because advancements in technology, but just advancements in society and, and healthcare and hygiene and, and so on and so forth. So because we've lived in this luxurious lifestyle, it's, it's, made us, it's made us soft. I mean, even the toughest amongst us, it's, we're still soft in general as a society. And I believe firmly because of all of this and because of the, 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 just the size of our society, the, the, the weakness and all of that, that this coming collapse that we are involved in right now, we're experiencing, is going to be far greater than probably anything humanity's ever seen. And so I go back to the, well, to the original question, will you survive this? And, you know, I get on here, and numerous other YouTube channels are constantly talking about preparedness. Even channels that aren't specifically prepping channels anymore. They're talking about preparedness. Um, financial channels and, and, and political channels and commentators are now openly talking about the importance of preparing stocking food away, stocking medicines away, having supplies, you know, water and other equipment, you know, being able to produce food because they all see the handwriting on the wall. And so we are preparing and that's why you're watching this channel. And some of you are greatly prepared and some of you are just getting started. But 
those preps don't guarantee survival, folks. They just don't. Um, you know, you don't just go out and, and, and purchase your skills. You know, you don't purchase your mindset, um, the, the mental fortitude. Those things are something that we have to develop within us. And what we are going to face, I don't think, is just going to be that food's going to be tight or expensive or contaminated or, or the same with water or, or whatever, or that we're going to have to deal with, you know, more violence because of criminal activity, insane activity, drug activity, illegal activity, whatever it is. We're going to have to experience and deal with things that that's going to just shake us to our core because I personally believe that we're also greatly involved in, in big spiritual warfare. In fact, that I believe that all this other stuff is is due to the spiritual warfare. So when you when you factor everything in, when you look at the whole big picture, or at least as much as you and I can see, it looks pretty dark. Now I'm not saying that to scare anyone, to throw you into a panic or anything like that. I, I it's it's just it's what it is. It looks dark and it looks scary and it looks uh, overwhelming. And the, the difficulty is going to be where people just become overwhelmed. They give in. It's going to be at some point much easier to go get your shot and get your chips and, and, and give over all of your freedom so that you can have some safety and some security and know that your family's getting some food and you're going to be in warmth and comfort and you're not have to out there, you know, slave and toil away just to produce some food, you know, while you're defending it from all of the bad people. Uh, you go into your little 15-minute cities, give everything up, but yet you're taken care of. That's going to be tough for a lot of people. And I'm not putting anyone down watching this channel right now, but I would dare say that it's going to be tough for some of you too. No matter how much you think it's not going to be, it's going to be tough. You know, th there's going to be challenges. I, I firmly believe that as this this Agenda 2030 Great Reset progresses forward and gets more and more intense, they're going to use every tactic they can to try to manipulate you and convince you to, to abide by their, their demands. Um, you know, to, to, say that, to say that they would use your children or the, the, the possibility of your children dying or starving to get you to comply, some of you might say, well, that's ridiculous. Why they wouldn't do that? That's you're you're going too far. You're going too far, really, because they're basically doing that now when it comes to complying to all of their ungodly, unbiblical gender ideology. I mean, how many people that you know that just a few years ago would not have accepted that at all, but yet they do now because their child, you know, their their 15 year old or their 20 year old or their child that has their grandchildren uh, is pushing this and to not rock the boat and to basically continue to have the relationship to see the grandchildren and all this, they've compromised and they've accepted. They've accepted this, this gender ideology. They've, they've accepted, you know, transgenderism and, and all of this other woke stuff. That's a good example right there that if you don't comp compromise, if you don't accept this, then you don't get to see your children. You don't get to have a relationship with your grandchildren. That's exactly what I'm talking about, folks. And this kind of stuff is going to continue on. And so to, to think that they would not use things like your children to compel you to comply, well, I don't think that that's, I don't think that's the case. I think that they could. We have to be ready for that. And your beans and, and rice and, and bullets isn't what's going to help you get ready for that. Those are things that you put away because it's going to make life a little easier when things get tough. But those in themselves are not what's going to, it's not what's going to save you. It's not what's going to protect you. It's not what's going to give you the strength to overcome their, their wickedness. I mean, there's, there's no other way to put it. it. That's what it is. It's their wickedness. We have to be developing in ourselves now the the ability and the and the, the understanding to see what's happening to to recognize it okay to recognize what they're doing now and what they're they're going to be doing in the future 
And to build our defenses up against that and to, to take a stand. And even though that stand, you know, it, that stand may, may cause harm and destruction and hurt, uh, as long as it's, you know, choose you this day whom you who are served, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord kind of thing. You know, that, that line drawn in the sand. You know, if you do you, that's fine, but that's not happening in this household. That's not happening with us. Same way with, with all of their, you know, CBDCs and their green energy and, and their bug juice and their bug meal and all that kind of stuff. Will you survive by taking a stand? Will you take a stand? And then if you do take that stand, are you willing for the consequences that come from it? Because I assure you there will be. They're, they're already, they're talking about it. They're talking about confiscating older vehicles and forcing everyone to have electric vehicles. Are, are you gonna comply with that? They're talking about over the next few years, downsizing the cattle herds of America. Well, how, what's that mean? Well, there's either gonna be some disease that's spread across or they just flat out, you know, euthanize, kill all these cattle. Well, then what happens? You either have to be very, very wealthy to purchase beef because it's already expensive or you you eat whatever they, else they give you they you eat their little their meal uh their little bug meal i was reading the other day that tyson and, and i had mentioned this back weeks ago at some point that tyson had worked some kind of deal with the i can't remember the name of it but the largest i think bug food per uh, company in the world or at least in america well, now there are certain ingredients popping up on their, their, their ingredients list of Tyson Foods. And they just look like the typical, you know, just whatever it's called. But if you do some research, it's, it's bug derivative ingredients. It comes from bugs. Are you going to take a stand and say, I'm not going to eat that stuff? Are you going to take a stand and, and not put stuff in your body? And, and even when it gets to the point where they say, well, you can't have medical care because you don't have this stuff. And don't say that that's not going to happen because it happened three years ago with people with the transplants and, and giving birth and all kinds of stuff. Craziness was going on. Are you going to take a stand then? Well, if, if that's the case, then, then what's your plan? What's your plan for when you or your husband or wife or your child needs medical care? Are you going to compromise then? Because it doesn't do any good to take a stand if, if you know that at some point, you know, well, I'll take a stand now until I actually need it and then I'll compromise. What's the point of taking the stand? It doesn't make any sense. This is what they're going to do to us. And it's going to be progressive. It's going to be invasive. It's going to get to the point that this, this little phone here that I'm, I'm recording on, that you're going to have to make a choice. You either have the, the luxury and the convenience of it, the ability to stay connected, uh, to find information and all that kind of stuff, or get rid of it but yet you're not being all of your privacy is being invaded i mean it is right now but it will get to the point that they're overtly tracking people and monitoring everything much like what we're seeing in china so you're gonna have to make a decision to just accept that and move on or to get rid of this technology uh, there, there's a lot of the u.s dollar you know are, are you gonna are you gonna accept the digital currency where it's controlling every aspect of your life if you get rid of it and you choose not to participate in that system, well, then what's the other alternative? It's going to change your life. It's going to make things hard for you. Very, very difficult. Are you willing to, to do that? Are, are you willing to lose your job and your nice home and your nice car and your pension and all that kind of stuff to take a stand to say, no, I will not comply with this stuff. I will not comply with this evil beast system. So going back again to the original question is, will you survive the coming collapse? And it's, it's not always just about, you know, will you survive the Mad Max scenario, you know, where everyone's running around and it's all a desert and, and eating people and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that's always a possibility. But will you survive this other scenario where it's not so much about the everything is gone and it's collapsed it's that you have to make a choice that if you want all that stuff if you want to continue your your modern convenient luxurious lifestyle you have to give up so much in, including your soul or you have to choose this alternative which is a very very hard lifestyle this lifestyle of an outlaw 
but at least you have freedom and you can keep your soul. Uh, will you survive that? And that should be the question that, that you should be asking yourself. Not, not always how much beans and rice you have in buckets. That's important. I say that all the time. It's true. But will you survive this other stuff? Because I don't care how many hundreds or thousands of pounds or tens of thousands of dollars in preps that you have put away. If you're not capable of surviving this other stuff, then it means nothing, folks. Because I think most of you know and, and believe that that's the path we're headed down. It may not be in the next three or six or 12 months, but that is the path that we are headed down. And so you need to start drawing your line in the sand now. I've said this for years. You better make sure you know where your line in the sand is drawn because at some point they will cross that line. It's inevitable. It absolutely will happen. It's not a what if, it's a when. They will cross that line and you better know what you're gonna do when that happens. Because it's, it's coming at us, folks. It's absolutely coming at us. So make sure you know what you're gonna do so that you can survive the collapse because it's coming, it's happening, it's happening right now. And it's gonna get worse. And that's not being pessimistic, that's just being realistic. Folks, you need to be getting your houses in order and preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.